On Crime Watch tonight, airport police in action as they arrest a conman, and how safety and security watch groups respond to a possible terror attack. Welcome to Crime Watch. I'm ESP Jessica Ang. The Airport Police Division is entrusted with keeping Singapore's civilian airports at Changi and Salita safe and secure. The division is also the appropriate authority on aviation security and has a direct hand in setting, reviewing and enforcing security standards for our civilian airports. However, it takes more than security measures to keep the airport safe. Like any crime which can transcend state borders, Crime can transcend airport borders too. To guard the airport against crime, the Airport Police Division must often go beyond their physical jurisdiction to find evidence, locate culprits and recover stolen properties. Taxi driver Doris So picked up her passenger from Changi Airport. On the way, her passenger introduced himself as a government officer working at Changi Airport. At our customs office, we have many laptops confiscated from passengers who didn't pay import tax. Because those laptops were seized, we customs officers are permitted to sell them to family and friends at discounted prices. Really? So how much were you selling for? For an almost brand new laptop, you can get it for as little as $300. $300? You're joking or not? No, I'm not joking. So... Doris, are you interested to buy one? Doris. It sounded like a good deal, and so Doris drove Alan back to the airport where she withdrew $300 to pay for the laptop. Here's the $300. We come. Thank you. So, where can I get my computer? Okay, you give me five minutes. You wait for me down there. I'll go to the office and take the level for you. There? Huh? Yeah. I okay, see you. Ten minutes passed, and Alan had not shown up. It was then that Doris realized she had been cheated. She immediately filed a report at the airport police. Investigating officer James Tan from the airport police was assigned the case. He spoke as if he's so educated and knew a lot of things. I thought he could be trusted. Today, we're going to have a case conferencing. Watching the following case. morning, I.O. James Tan briefed his fellow officers more details about the case. Since May 2009, a spate of cheating cases have been involving a male Malay who was posed as ITA officers who claimed that he has auctioned items for sale. He would then induce the victims into handing over the cash and thereafter, he would remain uncontactable. So, final question? James. I'm also currently investigating a cheating case. The modus operandi you just described sounds quite similar to mine. What's the case about? In Ayo Thorin's case, the victim was Shirley, a Filipino. According to Shirley, a man who called himself Rafael offered to sell her computers and electronic goods at heavily discounted prices. Like the victim in Ayo James's case, Rafael introduced himself as a government officer. We have plenty of confiscated items and we are authorized to sell them. Really? So what do you do with the money? Well, normally we would donate to charity. I see. Okay. I guarantee you. You won't find a better offer elsewhere. How interested? Um why not? Shall we? Okay, let's go. Shirley proceeded to place an order for 16 laptops, one portable PlayStation, and one iPod. The total bill quoted by Raphael amounted to $1,800. Raphael asked for a down payment. Shirley unsuspectingly paid him $700. But it's all I have right now. Oh, okay. No problem. You can pay me the balance some other oh, time. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. I'll call you when my is ready for you to call. Oh, okay. okay. But Raphael didn't call. Shirley lost her deposit and never recovered her money. Shirley described you as big and tall. I've checked with ICA. There's no such officer by the name of Raphael fitting the description. Doris also reported that Alan is a big-sized fella too. Looks like our suspects share the same description. 
A check through the police database revealed records of a Mohammed Helmi bin Mohammed Sharif who had previously been arrested and convicted for a similar cheating offence. To confirm if Alan and Raphael were indeed Mohammed Helmi bin Mohammed Sharif, the victims were invited to attend a photo identification this session. This one? Yeah, yeah, this is him. This is Alan. He's the one who cheated me. Are you sure? Yes, very sure. Okay, let's see the photos, eh? Mm -hmm. See the what? Mm -hmm. Is it the one? Mm -hmm. This one? Yeah, yeah, this is the guy. I'm very, very sure. Okay. A residential address was found on Helmi's record. The officers wasted no time to seek him out. In Sharif's flat, the officers found no signs of Helmi. They were also not able to find anything useful that could lead them to him. The officers did not give up, but proceeded to search for more leads by going through other cheating cases with similar modus operandi. From the search, they found another incident, which happened a month ago at the airport. Here's a beating number. Let's give him a call. After the break, find out how investigators from the airport police division tracked down the suspect. The victim was 51-year-old Abdul Rani. Helmi befriended him a few months before cheating him. Rani had ordered more than 100 laptops, one Gucci ladies' handbag, one Nokia handphone, and a couple of PDA phones from his friend, who had claimed to be a government officer. Rani went on to inform that Joe would usually hang out at hotels and pubs in Ballastia. The officers proceeded to survey hotels at the Ballastia district. It's Ayo Farid, we are from Airport Police Division. I'm here to conduct an investigation in a case of cheating. Can you please show us the record of the hotel guest, please? Unable to find a match of name and IC number, the officers moved on to another hotel. Good afternoon. I'm Ayo Tan. This is Ayo Farid. Okay, you better check the hotel record. Good afternoon. I'm Ayo Tan. This is Ayo Farid. I'm here to conduct an investigation in case of cheating. Have you seen this man before? I don't think so. Do you mind if I take a look at the records at the hotel? Okay. The search went on. The officers were determined to find their suspect. Have you seen this man before? Have you seen this man before? No. Their persistence paid off when a match of name and IC number was found. 
He said... An ambush was immediately carried out after the receptionist confirmed Helmy was not in his room. The officers covered all points of entry, ready to catch the suspect should he appear. This is Charlie. Suspect spotted. He's going to the hotel now. Further investigations revealed that Helmi had cheated eight other persons. Between February and June of 2009, Mohammed Helmi was involved in a string of cheating cases. Helmi's modus operandi was to pose as an off-duty ICA or customs officer where he would talk people into parting their monies for merchandise they would never receive. Altogether, Muhammad Helmi had cheated his victims an amount of more than $40,000. Muhammad Helmi was subsequently convicted of 12 counts of cheating and was sentenced to five years' imprisonment. Be careful when someone claims to be a government official and offers a sales transaction. If in doubt, verify with the relevant authorities on the identity of the subject. Be careful of get-rich-quick offers or sales that appear irresistible. If an offer sounds too good to be true, it's probably a scam. After the break, dealing with terrorism. Security is everyone's responsibility, not just the police. Since the September 11 attacks, police recognise the need for all buildings in Singapore to be tactically hardened against potential terror attacks. Police have developed a platform with the business community for such collaboration. This platform has since expanded to include other home team agencies to address all safety and security elements. This is known as the Safety and Security Watch Group, or in short, SSWG scheme. The Mumbai attacks in 2008 have shown that it is the public who are the first line of defence against terrorism. This is also the case in the recent New York Times Square incident where a vigilant street vendor spotted the vehicle bombs in time. Quick thinking and swift response from the community can help to save lives. In our next story, you will see how the police collaborate with SSWG to fight terrorism. Determined terrorist is all it takes to kill and disrupt life in our country. Fortunately, one vigilant member of the public can also prevent all that. Hello. Yeah, where are you? Where are you? The police cannot be everywhere all the time. It is often the public who are the first to notice anything suspicious. And knowing what to do in those first few crucial seconds of a terror plot may be instrumental in saving your life and preventing further tragedy. Tom is a security guard and a member of the SSWG. He has undergone crisis response training and his security division works closely with the police on measures to prevent, deter and counter any possible terror attacks. If you see a suspicious vehicle park in your vicinity, check the tyres. Heavy explosive will actually cause the vehicles to be sunken. Like Tom, many SSWG members are taught how to be alert and to respond to suspicious situations. One important indicator that something's wrong is a fake vehicle number plate. Protruding wires are another indicator. Sensing something was wrong and recalling his various training exercises under Project Guardian, organized by Central Police Division, Tom immediately alerted his security manager. Jimmy, uh, there's a suspicious looking vehicle outside the building. Okay, Roger, I will ask Peter to assist you. Uh, Roger, Roger. Following the alert from his security officer, Jimmy immediately called the police. Other indicators of a potential terror attack include excessively overloaded vehicles, Vehicles making unscheduled visits. Driver operating the vehicle in an overly cautious, aggressive or nervous manner. 
driver attempting to abandon vehicle, car windows overly obscured or tinted, and car seats removed to pack explosive materials. Finally, chemical smell and smoke are the most obvious signs that something's wrong. Okay, Roger, Roger. Jimmy immediately called the SSWG members of the neighboring buildings to alert them to the situation. Hello, Mr. Wong. This is Jimmy Ko from Building One. Hi, Jimmy. Okay, we have an emergency situation here. A possible vehicle bomb has been spotted. Vehicle bomb? Where's the location? It's near unloading bay two. Okay, thanks. I love my team. Upon discovering the suspected vehicle bomb, Jimmy activated his crisis response and evacuation plan. Please evacuate the building immediately. I repeat, this is an emergency situation. The response plan had been formulated during tabletop exercises conducted as part of the SSWG initiative. As Jimmy and his team have been well familiarized with the procedures due to their regular emergency exercises, his building management steadily ordered the immediate evacuation of the buildings through their emergency communication system. Security manager, we believe there's a vehicle bomb and we have started evacuating. Okay, guys, we need to cordon off both ends of the road. A vehicle bomb the size of a van can pack up to 1,800 kilograms of explosives and has a lethal air blast range of 60 meters. Buildings within 800 meters would need to be evacuated, as there would also be falling glass hazards. As the cordon area was huge, Pending the arrival of other police and emergency resources, the response force further sought the help of Jimmy and his security team. Can you get help from the building security team to assist us? Okay, no problem. Under the Project Guardian initiative, police can seek the assistance of trained personnel to control the cordon, evacuate the crowd, and manage the traffic flow. A number of SSWGs have participated in this Project Guardian initiative. By this time, Officers from Bomb and Explosive Investigation Division would have arrived. Hi, I'm Rosman from CID. Okay, I'm Zaki, the team leader. Okay, what's the case, sir? There is suspected car bomb. Okay. Have you got an overall yes, area? My man already done it. Very good. And then uh, how about the bomb squad? Okay, they're already here. That's the case, we take over from here. A command post was set up as the communication center to coordinate all the ground efforts between the emergency response forces and the SSWG members. The coordinated efforts helped everyone to respond quickly and effectively. Without such coordination, it would be a challenge to evacuate massive crowds in the limited space in the business district areas. This way, choke points, if any, will be immediately tackled to reduce further chaos and injuries. Meanwhile, the bomb was successfully defused in time by the Explosives Ordnance Disposal Team. Confirm ready. The building is clear. Okay, good job. I think that's the man. That's that's the one. That's the one. That's the one. Stop! 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 Fortunately for all concerned, this was only an exercise. Earlier this year. The Shenton Way SSWG cluster conducted a similar counter-terrorism exercise. Through these exercises, they learned how to better coordinate their responses with each other as well as with the authorities, such as the police, Singapore Civil Defence Force and Singapore Armed Forces. Being a member of SSWG, the we have benefited in DBA in the sense that we share timely intelligence among the buildings beside us, uh, giving us ample time to prepare for emergencies in any of the nearby buildings if affected with a security threat. I will encourage everyone to join because at the end of the day, it's a benefit. You are working closely with all the other stakeholders, buildings nearby to you, 
at the same time, police, we have a direct link to police when we need assistance. And whenever there is a seminar or a BCP training program, police always are willing to come and send an officer to do a security briefing and keep us abreast of current security threats. Currently, there are more than 800 buildings participating in the SSWG scheme. Besides fighting terrorism, the SSWGs have also over the years assisted the police in catching criminals. And many have been commended for their contributions to fighting crime. Since 2009, more than 40 of them have helped police make arrests. As a member of the public, you can play a crucial role in our fight against terrorism. If you see anything suspicious, you should call the police promptly. If you are involved in an evacuation, you should remain calm, follow the instructions of the security personnel and leave the place immediately in an orderly manner. Finally, before we close this episode of Crime Watch, do take note that from the 1st of November 2010, the LTA will take over five functions currently managed by the Traffic Police. In particular, LTA will be taking over the enforcement and administration of illegal parking offences. From the 1st of November 2010, Members of the public can call the LTA hotline at 1-800-225-5582 on illegal parking matters. There will be no change to the penalties for illegal parking offences. That's all we have for this episode. If you have any feedback or query, do drop us an email. This is ASC Jessica Ang.